Hi guys, welcome to the channel. This video will be a continuation of the part 3 base accessories video. In this video I'll add in some details to the base objects and end up with something like this. I would recommend saving a backup file here as we will be applying modifiers which are not reversible. We will retopologize the body in the next video and then UV unwrap everything to get ready for texturing. Okay, starting with the goggles again, I'm going to select the front faces here and pull them out a bit. and then add in some control loops with control R and bevels with control B and then use shift R to repeat the last operation in this case the bevel to bevel the other edges and tighten them up a bit and then I'm going to select the faces here on the side to create a little design and make the goggles a little bit more interesting I to inset then a mixture of extrusions and insets to get a shape like this A helpful shortcut is if you select a vertex in the middle here and then press control and the plus or minus on the numpad, you can incrementally select like this. Here I realize all the vertices I just created are a little farther out than I want, so I use this shortcut to make sure I grab all of them and then move them inwards a bit. I want to go for an asymmetrical look here, so I apply the mirror modifier and then model each goggle lens separately. After that, it's a lot more extrusions, insets, and bevels to create my desired look. Now on to the goggle headband thing. I'm going to apply the modifiers here as part of the detailing stage. One important thing to note is with the solidify modifier. To make my life easier when it comes to the UV unwrapping stage, I'm going to tick this box here called only rim under the solidify modifier. By default, the solidify modifier creates faces on both the inside and outside of the model where for texturing and rigging purposes, it's preferable just to have them on one side. You can see when I click the button, the mesh looks a little weird, and that's because the normals are flipped. Select all the vertices, and then press Shift-N to recalculate the normals. This will make it so that the selected faces face out. Make sure to flip your thickness figure here from whatever it was to the negative. So taking a look at the headband now, you can see there are no faces on the inside of the model, but it still looks solid. Okay, so now I'm going to reduce the subdivision surface modifier viewport figure down to 1 so we don't get too many vertices when we apply it. And then go up to the top of the modifier stack and click Apply All. A handy shortcut when in edit mode, you can quickly select rows of vertices, edges, or faces by holding Control and left clicking over the two endpoints you want to select like this. Then more of the same in setting, using the shrink fatten tool and beveling to get the desired look. I'm going to do this same thing throughout the rest of the model, applying all the modifiers, then doing some combination of insetting faces, shrinking, then adding in some bevels to tighten things up. Don't forget to turn on only rim on the solidify modifier before applying it. Also, I would recommend reducing the subdivision surface modifier down to 1 to keep the poly count down and make modeling a little bit easier.
Okay, I'm going to add some holes into the shoulder straps here. I should mention here I'm using a built-in Blender add-on called Loop Tools. You should enable it if you want to follow along with this part. I'm going to make sure only rim is selected. I'm going to apply the solidify and then the subdivision modifier at level 1. Then adding in some control loops to help with creating the holes. I'll do three holes here. Shift select the vertices here and then shift control B to bevel. And then right click and subdivide once. Then right click again and up to the loop tools menu then select circle. Then I to inset, E to extrude back, and then you can just delete the faces. Or you can press P and separate by selection, just in case you want the vertices or faces later. So you can see the face of the strap is a little wonky now. Some weird artifacts are happening around the holes. To fix this, tabbing back into edit mode, press K for the knife tool, then connect the corners like this to create quads and clean up the topology. Now onto the forearm straps, very similar as to before, applying the modifiers and then adding some bevels to tighten things up, adding a hole as before, and then like we did for the shoulder strap, I'm going to keep the faces of the hole rather than delete them. This time I'll use them, however, just to create a little notch for the belt with some simple extrusions. Okay, so creating some ammunition, pretty standard modeling here, same as before, lots of extrusions, bevels, and insets. Here I duplicate and separate the edge going through the middle of the shoulder armor and then press F3 and type convert. And then I select the convert to curve option. 
Then I add an array and curve modifier to the ammunition with the newly created curve as the curve target. I actually ended up with two curves here, so I delete one as I will just end up mirroring it all over after. Make sure to click on the edit and cage options here to make it so you can edit the ammo's position while it is on the curve. Makes it much easier. For the back straps, I'm going to use the spin function, selecting the bottom vertices here and then clicking up on the 3D cursor button in the top left corner, and then going to side view and placing it where I want the vertices to spin around. At first it doesn't look like anything happened, but you will see as you increase the angle here the vertices will rotate around the 3D cursor. You can also adjust the number of vertices it uses for the newly created curve by changing the number of steps. If you add a solidify modifier and it looks like this, make sure to clear the transforms. I made a backpack quickly, but it is a little bit too straight up and down for me. You can adjust an object by adding a lattice. Shift A, select lattice, and then scale it in object mode over the object of your choice. Make sure to scale the lattice in object mode only and not in edit mode. If you scale it in edit mode, the object will become skewed. You can adjust the number of edges it has over on the right panel here in the U, V, and W fields. Once you have the lattice positioned and configured, select the object and add a lattice modifier. Select the newly created lattice in the target field. Making a knife now, just tracing out the general shape of a blade. I don't intend for this to be seen up close, so keeping it pretty rough. Onto the gun, same thing as before, lots of extrusions and insets and bevels. Rotating around the 3D cursor here to create some barrels. This gun is based on a weapon from Team Fortress 2.
Now some quick sculpting on the beard, mustache, and eyebrows. I use the voxel remesher, increasing the resolution to get some more detail. Mostly just using the inverted crease brush, the crease brush, deform, and scrape brush here. There we have it, a quick rundown of adding in some details for this guy. As you can see, I'm not very good, so I keep things simple, but I think you can still get decent results and have some fun creating in the program anyway. Hit me up on social media and show me what you have so far. I'm really interested to see. Or just let me know if I've made any mistakes or could have done something way better. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope it helped, and see you in the next one.